Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirbyado. Welcome to today. We are still in the days of awe. I wanted to jump on here prior to doing church and just encourage you about today's acronym for all. It is the awesome wealth of eternity. What? Yes, the awesome wealth of eternity. We see this in Deuteronomy 8.18. God gives us the power to get wealth. We see it in 3 John 2, that God prospers us in life and in health as our soul prospers. And so as you join in today, God wants to encourage you that he gives you the awesome wealth of eternity. Amen. Hey, Deborah Faulkner, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so he has just been encouraging me about how wealthy we are in our soul. As in 3 John 2, scripture says, Beloved, I pray that you prosper in life and in health as your soul prospers. And I love, thank you, Deborah. Good morning. And I love looking at this from the avenue of contracts with contract law from law school. And I see the word of God as a contract. And so we see that the first element of 3 John 2, that God wants to prosper us in what life and in health as what our soul prospers. And so lately, God keeps telling me, Robin, whatever you give your attention to controls your intention. And so God really wanted me to go to this point. And I know I've been saying that a lot. But it is just like all throughout the day because he wants our attention on heaven. He wants our attention on his goodness and his greatness and how awesome his love is towards us and how he delights in us and he wants to do things for us. He wants to bless our soul. Well, look at this. So as what our soul prospers, then God does what? He prospers us in life and in health. So let's look at these two avenues, and this goes along with Deuteronomy 8, 18, that God gives us the power to get wealth. And you have to understand, the wealth in the natural realm is not God's kingdom. It's about the wealth inside of your soul. Good morning, Kimberly. God bless you. Love you. And so it's about the wealth inside of our soul. Now, this is going to be so funny. You're going to love this. And so I make Dr. Berg's healthy bread. If you've never made it and you're on the ketogenic diet, hey, Debbie Earp, I love you. Or if you're on paleo, Dr. Berg's healthy bread is one of the best breads. I've been doing it for three years. And let me tell you, that bread is mainly fiber, okay? Fiber. And so, really, you can only eat a little morsel of that bread. And just a little morsel of that bread will cause you to be full. Oh, Debbie, I love Seattle. I've been telling Rich. Rich, we have got to go to Seattle. He's never seen Seattle, Debbie. I love Seattle. Have fun out there. I love you. And so, yesterday, we had some leftover healthy bread that I made. And I ate like almost a regular slice of bread, kind of, and even less than that. Listen, if you eat that bread, only eat a morsel at a time because you'll find out later. And so I went to bed, and even before I went to bed, it was like that bread was expounding in my belly. And I was like, oh, Lord, I shouldn't have eaten that bread. I should have eaten just half of what I ate. And I knew I was going to regret it later, but you know, I hadn't eaten that much in a while. So I thought, let me just try it. And I did it with butter and honey. Oh, bread and butter and honey, just one of my favorites. And so I went to bed, I'm sleeping and I am so full that I am almost miserable, but not miserable, but almost, okay. And while I'm laying there and I'm like, oh, have you ever had those nights where you get up the next morning and you just like, I do not want to eat the next morning. I am not going to, you know, you say that to yourself at night. Hey, Dawn, God bless you. And Christy, I love y'all guys. Hey, Margaret, help. And so I was like getting, I was in bed last night, you know, like Thanksgiving dinner. And you say, oh, 
I'm not going to eat anything tomorrow. Hey, Suzanne, love you. I'm not going to eat anything tomorrow. I'm so full. Well, listen, that bread, <laughs> that little that little morsel almost of Dr. Berg's healthy bread, all fiber, it just expounded in my stomach. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm not going to eat anything tomorrow. So God began to speak to me. He said, Robin, do you know how full you feel and like you don't want to eat anything else? I said, yes, Lord. He said, well, Jesus, the bread of life, when you're filled with him, you don't want anything else. You're full. It expounds in your members and you have no desire for any other food. And that's what scripture says is Jesus confronted the enemy. Listen, we don't live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And that's the true bread come out of heaven, Jesus Christ. As scripture says in John 8, he's the true bread from heaven sent to the earth for you and I. And that bread is the bread of life, the bread of life. And God said, Robin, and I tell, I'm telling you, an anointing came on me in July as I have been writing this new book. And this new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, is all about eternal life. And it is beyond phenomenal. And so this anointing came on me in July. And it was like I had found the pearl of great price. And I just didn't want anything else, nothing else. And it was just this fullness that I had this wealth. And it was God. It was Jesus Christ. It was heaven. And that's all I wanted. And I could totally relate to why Jesus told the rich man about keeping the commands. And he said, yeah, I've kept all my commands, all your commands, all God's commands. But then Jesus said, well, go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And the man couldn't do it. And I could totally understand what Jesus's point was is that the man still wanted things of this world and he wasn't satisfied with God. He, he didn't have true wealth. Okay. That rich man, he had the richness of this world and he wasn't really willing to let go of it. And so he really couldn't prosper in life and in health. What good does it if God blesses you to give you money, but you're miserable you know, that's not true wealth. True wealth is like that bread in my belly, Dr. Berg's healthy bread. And and it's funny, H-E-A-L, health, heal. It heals you. God's word heals you. Amen. So third John 2, God, beloved, I wish that you prosper above, above all things in life and in health as what your soul prospers. And so as your soul is eating that daily bread, that life from heaven, Look at this, saints of God. You're not going to want anything else because you're so full. There's no room in your members. But guess what else happens? You become this electromagnetic field is the only way I can describe it. And it literally is an electromagnetic field. And I talk about that in Rev 22 too, and in Mindfulness Mount of Christ, where the message of truth and of God in your members where it just draws his blessings and it's an open heaven and the favor of God comes on you and you're just filled with life and life abundantly. So a couple of things I want to bring because I just have to be real, real with you, okay? And so uh, last night the Lord was speaking to me about why uh, someone that I care about close to me is not speaking to me a whole lot. And he just said, Robin, they're just going through a phase. It's not you. It is them. And this is what's happening. Okay. And at the same time, I'm realizing some other stuff that the Lord is showing me as he's revealing me other things. And he just, just said, Robin, I want you to get this. He said, you cannot put your attention on others and what they are not doing for you because it pulls my intent. And the Lord began to speak to me and he said, Robin, I want you to understand they're going through this phase. And this is why they're going through this phase. And this is why their ear is given to the enemy. 
but pray for them. Pray for them. And I said, okay, God. And it was like that bread in my belly, the bread that heals, that daily bread. It couldn't touch my members. And where normally my attention would be, oh, well, they're, do do they're doing this, they're not doing this, and they're doing this for other people, and they're not doing this with me. And then God began to show me areas in my life where I've done that with others, okay, even recently with people that God has just gotten out of my life that were on my Facebook, and God just got them out of my life. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, because there was some vexation. And so God just said to me, he said, Robin, the enemy was trying to get your attention on what they were doing and you need to put your attention on everybody else and on how they are a blessing in your life and the people that I put in your life that are a blessing. And I was like, God, that is so amazing. And he just keeps telling me about my attention. Wherever your attention is controls your intent. So saints of God, I'm telling you, amen, amen, Julie. Uh, oh, in your members, uh, that means inside of your body. And so I say that a lot, and so does Paul the Apostle. In your members is neck down. Paul says that in Romans 7, that if I do what I don't want to do and I don't do what I want to do, it's no longer me that's doing it, but that sin principle at work in my members, neck down, body. Because we're supposed to, Romans 12, 1, consecrate the body, amen? We're supposed to consecrate the body. And so as we go through the day, and we're in the days of all, you know, God's given us wealth. He's put people in our lives that do care about us. <laughs> He's put people in our lives that do give us attention. He's put people in our lives that just uh, are a gift of the Lord. And that's what our attention is on. So we're truly the richest people of all. And all that's happening right now, leading up to the days of all, is just us knowing eternal life. And every day, appreciating every moment. And if the enemy tries to distract you, just put your attention on what God has given and watch him prosper you in life and in health in Jesus name. Woo. I pray you have a blessed day. We're getting closer to Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. God bless you. I love you.